So now the equal area criterion part 2. So considering the transient stability analysis for a sudden change in mechanical input. So consider a single generator feeding energy to an infinite bus bar. So the mechanical energy is fed to the generator and generator produce electrical energy. The induced EMF is uh, the magnitude of E angle del and it is transferred to the infinite bus bar and the line reactance is X. So the electrical power transmitted by the generator is given by P equal to magnitude of E into V divided by the reactance into sine del. So the electrical power equal to P max into sine del where this P max is E into V divided by X. Now let the generator operating in steady state with torque angle del naught. Mechanical input power is given as Pm naught and the electrical input power is given as Pe naught. So, so under ideal condition this Pm naught is equal to Pe naught. The electrical power and the mechanical power will be equal and that will be equal to the maximum power P max into sin del naught. And this, consider this as a 10th equation. And now considering this power angle curve. So, electrical power in the y axis and del in the x axis, you can draw a simple power angle curve and fix this point A point as the initial point at which the electrical power equal to mechanical power. So, P naught equal to Pm naught and corresponding to that the del value is del naught. In this, the steady state operating point is the point A. So, let the mechanical input to the generator rotor be suddenly increased to Pm1. So, now the mechanical power is increased to Pm1 by doing some adjustment in the prime mover. So, now the operating point moves to point B. Since the mechanical power is more than the electrical power, the generator will have an accelerating power Pa. So, that accelerating power Pa equal to the mechanical power minus the electrical power. So, the mechanical power now increased to Pm1 and this mechanical power is greater than this electrical power and that is why we call this as a accelerating power Pa and this is your 11th equation. Now, due to this accelerating power Pa, the rotor speed increases and the rotor angle also increases due to that the electrical power increases. So, the Pe starts to increase by seeing this graph from A point to B point the electrical power also starts to increase. So, already the mechanical power increased to this level and now the electrical power also starts to increase. So, operating point moves from A to B. So, at point B the mechanical power Pm1 is equal to the electrical power Pe1. So, corresponding the torque angle will be del1. So, further the operating point moves from point B to C. So, at point C the electrical power Pe2 this will be greater than the mechanical power Pm2. So, here the electrical power exceeds the value of the mechanical power. So, we call that as a negative power or the decelerating power. So, the power Pa is negative and it is called decelerating power. The corresponding uh, torque angle is del2. So, from point B to C the del increases but the rotor speed decreases due to the decelerating power. And now the point C decides the damping of the system. At C, the speed of the rotor will be equal to the synchronous speed and from A to B, the speed increases and from B to C, the speed decreases. At C, the speed is equal to the synchronous speed. Now, thus the rotor oscillates between this A and C and finally, it settles down at this B point. So, a to B is the accelerating area and B to C is decelerating area. Rotor oscillates like that and it settles down at B. So, area 1. So, we can draw this line and now we can consider this A, B and this particular part as area 1, B, C and this part is area 2. So, area 1 is accelerating area and area 2 is a decelerating area. As per the stable condition, area 1 is equal to area 2. So, the system is stable if integration of del naught to del P A d del is equal to 0. To satisfy this condition, you have to equate the two areas. Now, after oscillation, the system will settle down to a new state. In this new state, that is at B, 
your electrical power equal to mechanical power pm1 equal to pe1 that will be equal to p max into sin del1 the corresponding torque angle is del1 this is your 13th equation and now area 1 so to consider this area 1 the del varies from del0 to del1 the integration of del0 to del1 and this is the accelerating area so we need to substitute the accelerating power pa so where this accelerating power pa equal to pm1 minus pe into d del and this is your 14th equation and now area 2 torque angle varies from del1 to del2 and this part we call it as a decelerating area so uh, under decelerating area your power pa will be equal to electrical power minus mechanical power so electrical power is greater than the mechanical power so you need to enter electrical power first so pe minus pm1 this is your area 2 and the 15th equation now there is an upper limit for mechanical power so the mechanical power increased from a point to b point there is some upper limit for the mechanical power pm so at this limit the power will be maximum and corresponding to that the del will be maximum we call that as a del 1 max under this condition your del 2 will be del 2 max so this is a maximum point corresponding to the maximum mechanical power and now this del 2 max can be estimated by subtracting uh, this portion from the total pi value so the total length is total length up to this is pi so this is your pi value and this part this part we don't know in order to consider this part we are considering uh, this part okay so if you draw a power angle curve in exact manner these two regions are same so we can consider this part that is del 1 max so pi minus del 1 max gives you this del 2 max now from equation 9 p equal to p max sin del and so you can substitute p 1 max equal to p m 1 max that will be equal to p max into sin del 1 max so where this sin del 1 max equal to p m 1 max divided by p max so from that we can derive del 1 max equal to sin inverse of p m 1 max divided by p max and this is your 17th equation and substitute this 17th equation in the 16th equation instead of del 1 max you will be getting the del 2 max equation pi minus sin inverse of this term and this is your 18th equation so from this figure further increase in the p m 1 max that will lead to the increase in the area 1 and decrease in area 2 so the area a2 will be less than area a1 so that will lead to the instability so the accelerating power will be greater than the decelerating power there